we will all offer the prayer of meditation. God of blessings, God who contro controls over everything, may we meet Jesus who is at the lowest place. Thank you for giving us this mystery where we can meet God. Have we come with problems? These problems have been given to you so that you will be humbled. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 2, may we receive these blessings. May this be a time where we receive answers. May miracles happen so that I change. May we, become, may we be able to see the world rightly again. May our eyes be able to see the answers and may our ears be able to hear. We believe that miracles will happen. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. Please repeat after me, sheep. So today, have you planted blessings or have you planted curses to receive punishment from God? People who are a man, they don't even know that they have demons inside of them. Truly, that's not a man. So if you cannot realize you're a beast that is perishing, let's find Psalm chapter 49, verse 20. So someone who doesn't know who they are, you ask them, you know, they talk about some title. They all act as if they're smart, but it is so sad. Why do you get problems? God gives you problems so that you'll become a man. If you have a lot of problems, that means you're completely not a man. So if those problems are given to you so you'll become a man, does that mean, oh, am I not a man? Well, your outside is a man, but your inside is a beast. So how can you call that a man? So when God looks at you, it is so pathetic. You know, our ancestors used to say, oh, that person's a beast. The, without this, this mystery, this truth of God, you and I, we'd all be pe people who are, who are beast, and yet we wouldn't know. So who are you? Have a look upon yourself. Well, I have three doctorates. You know, I have how many of this? You know, ma a master's degree, that's, you know, that's just so common. You know, what are you going to do with all that? No matter what anyone says, you know, that, you know, that waste which is inside of the toilet, you know, if you, to be a maggot inside of that, it's when you know who you are, that's when you're a man. You know, if you say to someone, oh, you're a maggot, they'll be like, what? How dare you defame me? And they'll try to sue you. But Job chapter 25 verse 6, it says, you're a maggot. But because they don't even know that they're a maggot, they don't have thanksgiving. It's God who makes a maggot into a man. How thankful is this? Let's find 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 5. Psalms chapter 49 verse 20. Well, we've read that many times. So you, when you come here to hear this word, you know, why is the pastor saying this? Whatever is not being released, whatever your desires that aren't being fulfilled, I'm saying this so that you will go the way to have your desires fulfilled. So is this the way we need to start? Well, I don't know. If God tells us to start this way, that's where we're going. So when your desires are fulfilled, that's when you're happy. If your desires are fulfilled, that's when you have a reason to live. So that's why we're going the way we are. So for your problems that aren't being solved, to do well, for you, for you to do more well by your desires. Let's read together. For our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit, and with full conviction, just as you know what kind of men we prove to be among you for your sake. 
Amen. So as you're reading something this good, why are you reading so weakly? This is for you to be revived. Let's read again. For our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction, just as you know what kind of men we prove to be among you for your sake. Amen. So this word gospel, it's not, It's not just a word, a gospel, that's just by words. So at this time, it makes you do well. So we've come here to do well, not just to hear some word play, some babbling of words. So this word, it's not just by words, it's with power. And so straight away, you can do well. But pastor, it doesn't work. That's why we've got to go the way for it to work, because it should work. So... Let's go straight away to the mystery of God, Colossians chapter 2, verse 2. So this word is not just by words, it's by power. That's why straight away it happens. So wherever you go, whatever you do, always there will be difficulties. Why? The things that you don't know for you to be taught. So it's for you to be taught the things that you don't know. So this word is not just by words. Straight away, it happens. It will happen. So whatever desire, you know, the fact that you have problems, you have to know why you have problems. Because it's God who brings about problems. Why has God done this to me? Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. It's according to what you've planted. So unmistakably, it's what your ancestors or you have done. So you have to receive it meekly. As you go along the street, oh, which bastard has done this? And so then you end up cursing your ancestors. You're cursing yourself, you know, which because it's what you did in the past. So there's nothing to get angry and curse about. And that's why Micah chapter 6 verse 9, God says, receive it meekly, mildly. Because if you end up nitpicking, it's what your father, your grand, your grandfather, who you respect so much, they did it. So when you say, which bastard did it, you know, how can you say that to them? So receive it meekly. So whatever problem has happened, it's because your ancestors have done bad things. Not only do you have that problem, but... You know, it's because of that that you're, you know, you're not being released. So repent of it and obtain knowledge. If you repent, he will give you knowledge. He will make you know. So he's given this to you so that you will obtain knowledge and and to be and to release yourself of it. You know, I went to this university where there are all these researchers. I didn't even know there was a place like that. They were saying they were saying something to me. I couldn't understand because it was something I heard for the first time. Because I didn't know. You know, who can I ask? So I was like, Lord, you know, if I don't know, if I don't understand, I'm like, Father, I'm a sinner who doesn't who doesn't know. Please forgive me. I did this with my eyes open. And then he said to me, say, oh, that's going to break. And so I said, well, that's going to break like that. And so they were so shocked. This is in some world, world-renowned world um, research lab. What do I know? I don't know anything, but the Father teaches me. But with your spouses, they teach you something that you should actually be repenting of, and yet you get angry, you know, at work or your business, something happens. Philippians chapter 2, verse 4, all you should do is say, that sin is mine. But you're like, oh, that's a bad person. So the blessings that should come to me don't come. And you end up, in, you know, just making more sin. So those people who have brought, brought problems, this is why your problems aren't being solved. But God... So, all people try to find out secrets. So, those people with with problems, God's saying, know my mystery, know my mystery. Then your problem 
which your ancestors and you have done, well, God's placed it in front of you. But if you know my mystery, it will change to answers. Your problems will change to blessings. You'll do more well. That's Colossians chapter 2, verse 2 and 3. So let's read it together. That their hearts may be encouraged, having been knit together in love, and attaining to all the wealth that comes from the full assurance of understanding, resulting in a true knowledge of God's mystery, that is, Christ himself, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Amen. The, what is the mystery of God? It is to realize Christ. It is to realize Christ. It's not to realize Jesus. It's not to realize the Holy Spirit, but it is to realize Christ. Well, what is that? It is the mystery of God. So why do we have to realize this mystery of God? Well, there's no other reason. God, who makes you alive or dead or gives you blessings or takes them away, he can put demons inside of them or take them out. He does everything. That's 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 6. So this God... You know, he's saying, what thoughts, what actions have you and your ancestors done? I know them all. So God, who knows it all, what's he, what's he saying? What your ancestors have done. You know, they did these evil things. A few years ago, you did these evil things. Well, today, I'm returning them to you. That's Psalms chapter 50, verse 21. So, the way to get rid of this is to repent. And that is the mystery of God. Why is, it you, why is it you come here? Those disasters that are coming towards you, to block them. So God's word, it's not just babbling with, uh, with your mouth. It's power. It works. So because of the sins that my ancestors and I have committed, that's why we end up tormented in the future. But to get rid of this, to make it nothing and then and then to change it to blessings that is the mystery of god so to obtain this so that our problems are solved instead of the problems we have blessings our children do more well that's why we're here to receive these blessings well can't you just do it in one day well what your ancestors have passed down for thousands of years you know that's what comes to you that's what appears before you you know just like a bad check comes back you know what our ancestors they've done it comes back so if we live a life of faith properly then instead of disasters coming to our to our children these bl these checks of blessings come to us this is the reason why we believe in jesus to receive these blessings we have to all receive god is so good how thankful is this so how can we omit this so if we do according to this mystery that god has told us then we'll all receive blessings let's read together that their hearts may be encouraged so where in the world can you find comfort and peace? You know, as you live with your spouse, if there's someone who expects comfort from their husband or wife, they are the biggest idiots because only God knows your heart. You know, your spouse, they, they don't know you. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 10. So then these spouses will say, when did you understand my heart your whole life? Where does it say? Where does it say that that will happen? So that's been given to you so that you'll look at it and repent. So then you, if you repent, instead of becoming two, you'll become one. Matthew chapter 19, verse 45. So if you become one, from that time, you become happy. That's why he's given it to you. You know, if you're given a knife, you can't sharpen it by itself. You need it to, to be rubbed against against the the stone and that's why spouses always you hear them grating against each other and and matthew chapter 10 verse 36 you will meet your enemy no matter how much you've researched or dated for 50 years and try to you know match up still your enemies 
but it's by this mystery of God. If your spouse relationship isn't good, that's because your heart is tormented. Even now here, there are people who have a bad spouse relationship. What does that mean? Because things aren't happening according to your greed. In other words, they haven't suited to your mood. If you have a move, that means you're, you're alive. That, you know, you can't blame anyone. Let's say there's a corpse that has died all day, that has been dead all day. Even someone who had the worst temper after they die. You know, you, if you ask, was there anything that made you angry today? They, can't, they won't even answer because they're dead. So this is to receive the gift of faith. And then afterwards, the baptism, it's the baptism that goes to heaven. Does that mean we need to die? No, it means to be happy. So when it says this encouragement in your heart, this comfort in your heart, it's when we know this mystery of God that he gives us this comfort. It's not our spouse that gives it. Well, why do we need a spouse then? It's when we look at their sin and repent of it as mine, that's when we receive comfort. So it's not, oh, I can't stand that person. It's because they're, they're there to give you encouragement. So someone you cannot stand, that's for you to receive encouragement. That's why they're provoking you so much. You know, you say, oh, we have personality differences. No, it's because it's for us to receive this, this encouragement. You know, if, you're, if you've got a bad temper by yourself, you don't suit with anyone. Whoever you're put with, you don't suit. So to look at the other person and to do the mystery of God, forced at repentance, so that you'll be at peace, that's why he's given it to you. But if you don't do this, and then you try to match up with that person, it's, it doesn't work. That's why no religion, no learning, no education works. It's It will work only by this mystery of God. What is the mystery of God, first of all? He makes me at peace. He makes my heart at peace. So in order to make me happy, but... But then if you get problems, you say, oh, I can't, I can't live, you know. That's what you and your ancestors have done. So by the mystery of God, to do forced their repentance and to change it so that you feel at peace. So when it says to receive comfort, you know, people, they'll go hiking or they'll go um, traveling, you know, leaving behind a spouse. Where does it say that that's how, how you receive comfort. So those, those, so those people who more and more their relationship gets further and further away. So you say that you're living a, a that you have a hobby. That's following after demons. Those hobbies, which one of them lasts? steadfastly there's none you know you change from this to that at one time you may have liked fishing and then these days i like golf why patience is only given to someone with the mystery of god god is eternal jesus is eternal the holy spirit is eternal so for uh, for my name to remain eternally i have to I have to change, but demons, they don't have this eternity. They, they're they so good at um, changing. So in the world, someone who who flips from this to that, they don't have patience. They have demons. But the mystery of God changes our inside. So once you cast out this filthy demon that's you know that you call a hobby, then that hobby disappears. So God says, starting by receiving this encouragement, this happens by the mystery of God. So us coming here, we have to receive this comfort in our hearts. We have to be at peace. You know, it's when your heart's still, that's when you can see the world properly. 
if you look at a ripple and you look at your face inside of there, your face looks like a monster. It's like long, short, you know. But when it's still, you see your face properly. So it's when you have comfort in your heart, that's when you see the world properly. If you can't see properly, and then that's why you, you know, you paint a painting, it looks like Picasso's. So the, this mystery of God gives you this comfort in your hearts. So the problems that have happened in front of you, it's be, they've happened because you can't see properly. But once your heart is right, that's when you'll see rightly. You'll see the way to go out rightly. You'll see the way to live rightly. You'll see how to receive answers properly. So this, we have to all receive this. That's why you're here. So if we want to interpret all of this word, there's no end. But first of all, to receive encouragement in my heart. You look at people who don't receive encouragement in their hearts. They're so um, nervous, whether they sit or stand. They're so restless. Whether they're standing, they're not, they're not comfortable. Whether they're sitting, they're not comfortable. You may be laughing, but that's the way I'm living. And yet you don't know. You know, you look, you look at others and you say, oh, yeah, they're so opposite. But, you know, starting from me to be right, that's by the mystery of God, to receive this encouragement in my heart. Who do you want to comfort you? If you do four-step repentance, it's amazing. He gives me peace in my heart and I'm able to see the world properly. He gives me the eyes to see properly. So then you realize, oh, this is what I've done wrong. Oh, this is what I've done wrong. Oh, this is what I did wrongly to my wife or to my children or to my saints. And that's why my children, my wife, you know, the saints didn't do well. And so then you repent. So then after you repent and your heart's at peace, then you start to see people who aren't at peace. You can see why they're not doing well. You see, if those people who fall asleep, when I, when I talk about money or when those people, when I talk about fornication, they, they start to fall asleep. All of this word is medicine. So when I try to feed the medicine, someone with a cold, if you try to give them cold, a cold medicine, they don't want to eat it. Someone with diarrhea, you try to give them that diarrhea medicine and they won't eat it. So because they're not eating it, that's why they're not healed. But you see, as soon as that word goes out, they start to fall asleep. So you can see, oh, that's what they're sick in. They don't want to eat that tonic. You know, if, or if I say some other word and someone starts to fall asleep, I can see, oh, that's what they're sick in. So they, they teach me what they have. That's Romans chapter 2, verse 6. Looking at your actions, you can know. That's Proverbs chapter 20, verse 11. It's exact. But with the mystery of God, everything is released. This, that, it's all released. So today, what problem of what problem is not being released? Many people say it's because of money. Why? Because everything is related to money. But God says, money is something that I'll give you unlimitedly, and yet your money problems aren't being released. So that means God and I we're not we're not right with each other. So who's wrong? Me. So God has no wrong. Always it lies with me. So then how do we match up? It's by four-step repentance, the mystery of God. That's when all your desires will be fulfilled. Today, let's receive our desires. Let's make our hearts at peace. So whatever problem, even your parents' problems, he will listen to because God has told us to pray for others. So he will hear when you pray for others. So today, the whole day, for my heart to be at peace. If I'm not at peace, there's something that, that you know, I need to wash. Or there's something that you're holding on to. That, so if you have a problem, there's something you're holding on to that's wrong. You know, you say, oh, I'm going to die. Whatever problem that you've brought, 
In my heart, if you don't have satisfaction and happiness, it's because things aren't happening according to your greed. So it's it's my greed. Me, which is my greed. That's what you have to repent of. If you have a bad spouse relationship, it's because you're saying, oh, they're not doing according to my greed. You say, oh, our spouses, we've lived for 70 years. No, we've got, you know, bad personality differences. No, it's because you're you're both holding on to greed. Today, let's be, let's receive comfort. So for me to receive comfort, for my heart to be at peace, today, let's all receive. It's only by this mystery of God. So whatever problem I have, it all comes from my greed. If you can't be obedient to your parents, that's because of my greed. If you're grumbling against your parents, it's because of my greed. No matter how much you struggle to be a good person, if you let that that greed remain, it's not going to work. So the blood of Christ washes away. You know, if you wash with the blood of Christ, that past greed is cut off. Well, but why can't you escape from that, that? Because you're like, oh, you know, I wonder if it's going to, to, you know, go away. So because you're deceived by yourself, you go to your past thoughts. And so then the demon's like, yeah, that's right. And they come back in. And that's why you may be healed here, but then you go back. May no one end up like that. So then at this time, let's keep washing with the blood of Christ. Our past sins, our past filthy sins, they're, they're still in our hearts exactly. Let's wash this with the blood of Christ. You say, oh, it's not being washed. Well, you have to ask God how you've forgiven him. Um, you've got to ask how you have tormented God to be forgiven of that. So it's because of your sin that Jesus shed his blood and died on the cross. He did this so that we could be reconciled to God. So we have to ask for forgiveness. Once we ask for forgiveness, oh, it's because of my personality, because of my problems. I'm tormenting God. And you keep asking him for forgiveness. If it's money problems, to say I've tormented God about this, you know, if it's disease or if it's children, you know, to ask for forgiveness, then at some moment God will say to cleanse your heart. So if you cleanse your heart with the blood of Christ, so then after the Father has forgiven everything, even though we've washed, we keep wanting to go into our past thoughts. So to cut off those past thoughts, and say, I'm completely a new person. My heart's at peace. If you hold on to this, then God will work exactly. Your desires will be fulfilled. Your diseases will be healed. Those who need to receive answers will receive answers. Those who are to be happy, they'll become happy. So, Father, at this time, help us to have a new start. May we wash with the blood of Christ and have a new start. By the mystery of God, may we have a new start. I'm not my past, but just like a young child, a new person, a new person, a blessed man, someone who does well, someone who doesn't have problems. At this time, may we have a new start, a new start. May our past thoughts not hold on to me. May we not be tied up to those bad thoughts. May we wash thoroughly. God knows all of our hearts. So wash it all. With the blood of Christ, wash it all. A new start. If I'm new, then my children will become new. My family will become new. Everything will become new. I don't have a past. It's now a new start. A new start. All things to work out. No matter what, to receive the blessings. A new start. The past has nothing to do with me. A new start. A new start. 